It's October 4th, 2022. Um, I'm really this morning trying to piece together a semblance of reality. Um, the other day they put up something, um, now the way that the humans, when I arrived, birthed in this area, they described it as like 19th century, seventh decade, eighth year. And again, characteristically, that's how it would break out if time was being defined and refined. Um, which as an embodiment of time and a piece of time that carried time forward in recreating my star of arrival in linear fashion. Um, I then had 20th century, zero decade, and a year in that numerical renumeration, um, or that holds some numerical value. To rewind, though, since if the entire world just melted away and there was no defining anything, including visual spectrum, and audio had to be reestablished for some reason, and then sitting down with star systems, or star, my star system that I arrived in, I have an anniversary with some people, some of them might look familial, ancestrally or otherwise, um, none that I have access to on a daily basis, however. There's importance in that key fact. So I'm watching CBS this morning on the television on what did they construct today. Um, they mentioned somewhere in the world, I think it's in Florida, I think they mentioned, there's some Army Air Force Base reference, which I never hear about, but they've got the number seven attached to them, which I thought was interesting. Um, the other day, they had Director Burns on, um, and he was going through something, and, and it had a visual reference to seven stars. Um, and then Tally Marks. I don't know what a tally bar is, but there's a question mark. There's a tally mark. There's a bunch of other marks that I've noticed. In special task force mark. And just keeping watchful eye. Um, not knowing where the hungry in the eye ever is. Um, so, I'm watching this. They're speaking from their perspective of professionals um, in their, I suppose, I mean, like, do you call it colonized fact? Like, not faction, but, or maybe, because, I mean, they are speaking fact. I'm on the outside, so near and dear to my heart. I'm trying to look for some semblance of reality that others abide by. A really difficult task when it's on something that they refer to as entertainment, which I don't really find entertaining. Um, and so they explain their perspective about this daycare issue. They 
they have the Army and the Air Force separated for some reason they don't disclose. Then they talk about how these families who live in one place have to commute. I being left out. Like, I don't know. What is my life called? Am I called the private sector? Because this gets really confusing when the private sector won't allow you in and won't participate with you in their capitalistic fashion of playboys and how they've constructed the non-militarized way of living. When they've somehow ostracized you without your permission, without your knowledge, and they've somehow teased you or heirloomed you out of military service or military safety, if that's what's safe. I don't even know at this point. Is the military the safe people? Is the private sector the safe people? Which, I mean, like, I don't, I don't really know who's who or what's what. It's in, like this total upside down, inside out. Instead of this, it's what I refer to as this, but then I have to steady myself in vector with a prop because I'm like, I, I, Roman numeral six on that one, I, um, so I'm like, so private sector hasn't provided a formal or proper family or spouse or even partner as far as housing, family, children, planning, and enjoying a human existence or even being able to perform in a human existence that is even slightly resembling what others get, how others get to perform. Um, certainly it's not at peak performance. Let's put it that way. It's, it's wrought full of pitfalls and inefficiencies. And it's just, I mean, it's just, for me, it's just dereliction everywhere, but like of, human responsibility between like a man and a woman if that's I mean that's what I chose that's what I wanted to choose and the lack thereof of whatever so um so I'm watching this and I see they have inefficiencies on this one particular base which between the air force and the army and how they're interacting in a conversation about just one family and then they even speak of it as la familia not mi familia mi familia i don't know if that's something different if that's where they use surname because here they're using last name which i know is uber important it's l-a-s and then there's the whatever so i'm watching this and i'm like i'm stuck between forgotten about by private sector and forgotten about by military sector in how do I survive? Like, how do I even reach for something when it's like one went this way, one went this way, and I was just in some, I don't know what, forgotten about category maybe? Everybody's just busy doing their own thing. I, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Now, what I will say is I was on campus at Hofstra. In one, on campus, in one section, I received white robes, private, between whatever, with the three letters that person was with me when I got the call from something that referred to itself as Ian he referred to himself as Ian who I was with 
walked me across campus to meet with Ian. He gave me a piggyback ride. I think that's how I arrived. He wanted to carry me across campus. I was just like, you're, you don't feel silly and ridiculous. It's like making a spectacle. So anyhow, so then we get to Ian and then Ian hands me an envelope and an invitation to an honors award ceremony, whatever, which I didn't even know I was up for. It was very confusing uh, for me anyhow. Um, who I was with when we went to go meet with Ian. I was, I was looking to him for... Um, direction on just like have you heard of this like does this sound real is this something i should take part in and so then i accepted the invitation and then i went but i had to go alone so i put on business attire this black dress um correct length for a black dress and fully covered and I went um, and there were Greek letters involved but I don't speak Greek and I don't know which letters they were or what symbols they were I don't know what sounds they make I remember the colors though you know kind of sort of but not really on the certificate the pin was the pin was stolen um, in some, I mean, they just come into the house and take things and then leave. Um, and then it appears like it just disappears. So, um, and then both Ian and the other side of campus, they were both, they both took place on Hofstra's campus at university and then so that award ceremony my white robe participant was not an attendee of um, for whatever reason I don't know but there is clear signs that something was in the works I don't know what um, but that's also then where what I refer to as Nicklaus um, was to meet me off campus with this girl Janice from the same quantitative analysis class that I was in. Um, I had that and then I had business law, but it wasn't law. I mean, it's local, small, whatever. And I don't really remember most of it, uh, enough of it, but it was covered later at Green Street, which was something else I want to do after incidents happened that harmed my person. Um, but the Nicklaus was supposed to meet me, but instead Romer was there and showed up and that whole whatever took place in my disinterest completely. And I made it very clear. Um, and then the pursuit thereafter and of the complete disappearance of Ian and of Nicklaus thereafter, shortly after the robes and after, or the robe and then after this award certificate with these Greek letters that I, I can't even rely upon my memory for my own edification and my own protection, um, which is a problem for me, once again, it would seem. So this is how 
they educate me on, like I've seen the movies of war in some theoretical story format and combat zone. I've seen a few of them. I've seen historical reference of mythology of Troy. Um, I don't really remember that movie. Brad Pitt was in it. Um, and then there's the, well, here, I'll put this up. This is, and then I see them acting in this format of between something called an army and something called an air force, but nothing that I have access to, nothing that was taught about. I don't know if my parents know about it. I don't know if it, I don't know how one gets into this form of service. I don't know if it's an invitation thing. I don't know if, like, why would somebody be thrown out to the playboy section in private sector and have to rely on them if that's just not how they're wired and built and, and, and other than that, if this playboy capitalistic private sector is going to totally eradicate contact with the children left and not provide ample work, housing, I mean, like, feasibility study, like, hello, they failed. So, I find that the way that the, either Air Force or Army rep, I don't know who it is up here, the way that he explains their child care inefficiency between the Air Force and the Army, very enlightening and, and heartwarming in the sense that at least they get because he says when they worry about their child care, then it takes focus off the mission and then they're not able to perform as whatever for setting expectations. Um, but for me in larger analysis of like star system analysis of what happened to my national security? What happened to being able to live on this planet with ear things and somehow work within some survival portion? I mean, there was growing up, there was no talk up for this. I know one of my uncles had had something called a Navy, but I used to ask questions and then it was never spoken of after that. And then my grandfather was in something called an army. I had a different grandpa that was in something that had no word in English. But then it was like never spoken of ever again. I don't know what that was about. I entered something called a public school or a Catholic school, then a public school, then a private school. That's something called a preparatory school. I mean, I've entered a lot of schools. None of them have helped in private sector. It's like they don't even acknowledge it because I don't have this magical paper called a bachelor, an associate, a bachelor, or a master's. I'm like, I have a robe ceremony on campus from something in like a K and H category of importance in some fashion thereof. And some Greek certificate I was given from another seems like important piece of the story and the puzzle. And then just like everything else, it's just like they disappear off the face of the earth into whatever their special function is. And I'm just here trying not to get slashed, trying not to get stung, trying not to get hunted by things that are outside of my control and I have no idea why, how, or who 
they exist. We are back now at 7.30 here on CBS Mornings with a CBS News investigation into a child care crisis in the armed services, a crisis that could affect the military's readiness to fight. According to our reporting, 11,000 children whose parents are in uniform as we speak or work in the Department of Defense are in need of child care spots urgently right now. In some cases, their parents actually have been forced to quit the service entirely. And among those affected are members of the Army's elite Green Beret. Wow. Daughter Olivia as a civilian married to a Special Forces commander. When we moved here in May of last year, she was on 17 wait lists when we moved into our house here. 17 wait lists? 17 wait lists. I received... Somehow it just totally fast forwarded through whatever it fast forwarded through for whatever reason. So, but here's the thing here, she has wait lists. She has services. She has directors. She has a direction. She has a system that she knows how to rely on, even though it's inefficient and it's not working. She still has a system. In private sector, playboy, capitalistic, whatever they are, who the people that are forgotten about try to seek out in some manner or hope they find you, there's no system. I'm creating a star system of communication because I know I have an anniversary date with a couple of people a year in the ninth, from the 19th century. I'm hoping the seventh decade, since seven seems to be a really important number up here, which I'm only finding out about now, if we're counting stars and decades of when we arrived together. I think that Disney princess series put a Dumbo drop together when the stork like delivered us and like life was supposed to go so perfectly because we were seventh decade, eighth year, but it has not worked out on my end as Disney princess format usually does work out in the end thus far by decade four, by 44th chronological year, it is more of like a horror movie in several different references. An email saying we have an alternative care option for you, and it's an hour and 10 minutes from my house. Now as a family advocate, Tobin shares the community's concerns with base commanders. How many Chelsea's are out there? Oh, wait, you have a system where people actually listen to you and care about you? <laughs> right, yeah, I don't really see where I have the same opportunity to get voiced and heard. I mean, I'm throwing this out into the universe. I'm hoping there's a recipient somewhere, um, but I have no confirmation of that. I have absolutely no two-way communication to tell me what's working, what's not working, if they even care. You know, interestingly enough, um, Lewis took me to something called Thomas's uh, Ham and Eggery Diner last night. We were there, We it, and we ordered, it was the first day I was allowed to eat real food. Um, and then all of a sudden, the entire diner filled up with people. And I was like, whoa. And there's only one waitress. So a uh, single uh, woman in her 60s, I think six, late 60s, early 70s, sat down next to Lewis and then started almost, almost like she joined our table, started talking to us. Um, and it was very interesting. Now, Lewis says that in his life frame, he knew and had business, he did business in the private sector with um, a lot of men by the name of Ira, spelled I-R-A, in Lewis's life frame. 
life frame before I got here in a life frame where he got to go internationally and drive in a Citron, which sounds like something that's really important um, from my perspective of I wasn't given that level of whatever, whatever that I'm able to remember on a day-to-day -day basis based on the amount of stings and sometimes it doesn't even sting. I just go black. Um, I just go out. I don't know who has that authority or how often they've used it, but it seems more than I'm comfortable with when I really think about it. Um, living in this America where like the TV entertainment people make it seem like it's just this. And I want to believe it. And I've lived it that it's really that great my entire life. Just now going back on things and reviewing, I'm like, mm. um, and trying to figure out where my direction is for how do I get to where I need to be and want to be. Um, I noticed in my life frame, I have not met this name, like the, the Jewish community in Lois's days, that's how we were referred to them without being racist. Just that's how they identified. And then they taught him some of their private word. One of them, he said, was Yenta Telebenda. I thought that was very interesting. And he actually made me smile last night. Um in reference to the woman who just sat next to him at a table that was slightly separated. And while we were already had our food, she just took over the entire conversation, which was fine because I really didn't have anything to say and neither did my son. Um, and she kept Lewis busy with conversation. So that was interesting. And she was a very nice woman. Um, happens a lot random strangers just whatever um and so i realized in my life frame i have not met iris i don't know does that name just go out of vogue out of fashion did something change in the world what i have met is two same three letters you just rearrange them i've met aries a-R-I. I don't know in a different fashion, a different pageantry, a different following what that means, but I know it's significant because I don't understand how you could go a whole life meeting a specific, very prestigious name to a specific community, and in only a few decades, there are no more left? How does that happen, and why did that happen? This gets very confusing of how do you say it respectfully and in a serious manner, like my grandfather always suggested, but to bring light to something that seems so insignificant but in its individual insignificance, it is such a red flag of, is there something more serious going on? There's countless Chelsea's out there. According to Defense Department data, more than 11,000 children are waiting for military-provided child care. The 7th Special Forces Group told CBS News it has approximately 400. We see that children that don't have access to quality childcare and educational opportunities, they have a lifetime of difficulties to include depression, anxiety, learning disability. How about drug abuse? Just throwing it out there because I was watching the entertainment station network the other day, fake news, whatever the heck they call this, CWS. Um, and they were showing an area that they, that the private sector police was, patrolling and um, they seemed to be private sector employees that somehow lost their way 
and are now like dying on the streets with addiction issues. Again, it's, I know it all is relatable. Attachment issues. Captain Tracy Began yes. is the unit's clinical psychologist. I've seen this probably 20 to 30% of my patients have had spouses that have gone back home specifically because of childcare issues and difficulty with finances related to not being able to work and have that second income. The Air Force provides for the seventh group's childcare because Campbell Simons is within Eglin's boundaries. According to the Air Force, it has not built a facility on the Army base for safety reasons because it falls within a testing range. Now again, I listened to it. Cognitively, I'm intelligent enough to follow along kind of sort of at a very basic level. But it's in-depth construct and how it's relatable in a deep dive, whatever. That's an ongoing, if I am able to, God willing, hold it in the hind brain and carry forward just knowing that now it's an enlightened piece I've acquired and I'm able to use it as a reference tool. But in this area, memory has not been that crisp, crystal clear and sharp. It is like almost like the memory bank gets wiped nightly or weekly or monthly or every five years or whatever it is. And it's really hard to rely upon what you've already learned and know in order to course correct or to stay on task with moving forward in this level of, I don't know, I call it, I referenced it yesterday as laying low at like a low life. I mean, it's a standard. It's not a high standard, but it is represented by a standard of some sort. I just don't know how the two different micro microcosms would be able to build a bridge between near, dear, and heart. But internal military records reviewed by CBS News suggest the Air Force has already made changes to remove all risk from the area. How can it be a safety issue when you've got, you know, a shop at a gas station, you got a subway right here and, and a church? Those are the, the tough questions that uh, family members ask me. And that subway is really interesting because that's a national brand. Which brings with it licensing, strategy, corporate, and a whole lot of other issues that really blurs the line between private sector and then military services when there's brand almost like an anchor and each one's holding one tether and then like tug of war back and forth. Me. What's the impact on the mission when you've got someone downrange and they're getting these concerning phone calls from family members about something as basic as childcare. Yeah, so their mind is not focused on the mission um, and they're not operating uh, at an optimal level. Uh, if they're worried about concerns, whether it's family or, or finances. Good job. In 2015, Chelsea hit her breaking point and left special forces to care for their two sons. Was it hard to step away from your military career? Very. I, I miss it um, a lot. The group motto is the family business. They have La Familia on everything. And yet the family is being left behind. There's a disconnect in what we're putting out and portraying and what's happening in as far as childcare is concerned. Late last night in a statement to CBS News, the Air Force and Army secretaries confirmed they have been working together over the summer to identify short-term options and a long-term fix. They have agreed on a final location for a new child development center. The families told us it should be on their base like the other services. Specifics on location and how long it will take are expected later this month, Jerika.
a lot of families left behind and a lot a of lot. women forced to make sacrifices. And the military can figure this out. They can build right. a bridge in six hours, an airstrip in 12, and they of can course. get a child care center up there. They have the resources. It sounds like they're working on it. You would That's think a really powerful piece. Thank you so much, Catherine. Coming up, what? Now, what it fast forwarded over was there was a civilian they re referenced it as who married someone who was in a valise or some military military position so it does happen what i'm really unclear about is like debauchery of my own personal situation in what happened um and so I'm just, again, and like that's the the commentator is saying, like they're able to build bases and Air Force strips and like whatever in a few hours. I mean, there are expectations, but I don't understand like what it doesn't explain. Like it explains some problem that I'm experiencing at private sector, but it's... Um, it doesn't explain what they actually do. What is their actual contribution? What is the, what should the public's expectation of a military be? Why are they here? Why are they needed? Why are they so well care, cared for? And why are we being treated like crap or forgotten about, especially in my situation, with not having access to a corporate partner that actually brings us in and works as a surrogate to the deficiency of not having a military family. Where is the surrogate private sector family? I mean, it's got to be one or the other. Otherwise, it's willful neglect of some sort on the part of both of those parties. So it gets really confusing. Now, Cindy Shu now has a morning show, which I don't um, normally tape, but today I did reference it because it was, I caught a piece of it where um, Drew Barrymore is there and they do this, like, I guess they're trying to make it look natural conversation about what the purpose of the news is to them why it's so important to them, which is um, interesting just as an add on as to like, why do we, why do they even allow us to have this service? Um, I thought it was like a teaching tool, but it makes it really difficult also to have to sit here, not being paid, but having to sit here to look up, to even try to find anchor points or grappling or conversation to orient myself in my adulthood after having been left like so long, not knowing what to do, where to go, who to listen to, how to tune in. I mean, like there's been no direction. And my dear friend, she is a big fan of the Go-Go's and recently inducted them into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Joining me in the studio is Drew Barrymore. Good morning. Hi, Cindy. She, you know, you are such a ray of sunlight and it's so nice because, you know, I've watched you since you were little, little and loved you. And then if you came in and you were mean, I would be so disappointed. First of all, <laughs> anyone who behaves like that shocks me too. Yeah. It's like, why would you treat people like know, that? Like, we're here on this planet to take care of each other. Yeah. And each exchange, I believe, big or small, has the potential to really catapult someone in the right or wrong direction in their day. It could be as quick as you're grabbing something at a counter, mm -hmm. but do you smile at that person? Do yeah. you engage with them? Yeah. Do you give each other that boost that human to human kindness does? And well, I'm do. really obsessed with it. You do, <laughs> and I really love that. All right, we've got some Drew news to share this morning. Um, a first men in skirts. You did a story we about did. this with Bobby Moynihan. Let's take a look at what you did. Yep, it's trending. <laughs> First up, CNN reports dudes everywhere are taking their pants off. Mm -hmm. 
and embracing skirts. You gotta finish that sentence. Uh, <laughs> A-listers like Brad Pitt, Lil Nas X, and Oscar Isaac have recently been spotted sporting skirts, and it's not just a phase. More and more guys are opting for this free and breezy fashion statement. And remember, in ancient Greece and Rome, men were all about the skirt life. Pants didn't come into the picture until skirts became impractical and dangerous to wear in factories during the Industrial Revolution. They look good. They look really handsome and stylish. I think so, too. And I, you know what I love is, is, you know, people are saying, oh, my gosh, guys in skirts. But if you think about it, look at you. You have a tie on. Yes. Just, you know, a few years ago, that would not have been acceptable. I have always loved um, the fact that we sort of are you know, shocked by things, but if you go to Scotland or you think mm -hmm. about the Roman times, men were in yeah. skirts. So yeah. really it's just fashion coming back full circle. And then finding out the industrial revolution sort of tidbit and morsel of history. I'm always thinking like, how can we have an educational historical aspect or a thinking piece or a, hmm, I didn't know that. Right. Um, I want it to be funny. I want it to be informational. And I love a spin on the news because I am a news junkie. She is. You started watching at like 13 years old. You had the news on all the time. I never not have the news no. on. It makes me feel safe. And I think there's always an opportunity. We have to do our civic duty and pay attention to all the top line stuff. We have to listen to difficult stuff. But we've got to give people hope and show them the good things yeah. that are happening. The function, the metro, the local, what's happening in your community. Those things really matter. And the news can be incredibly uplifting as well. That's what the show is all about. It really is. And I... To some of us, it's our only line to human intelligence. As scary as an admission as that is. Like, this is a form of intelligence. Again, really hard to follow at times. Not always relatable. But it's a form of intelligence for what's going on local and anything we should know about far away. I mean, like, I don't, there's no other intelligent network. Like, not that I've been able to tap into or that I've been able to, like, follow along, be educated by, stay in consistent contact with. I mean, it, it really does feel at times like being on a planet or in a territory at surface Earth all by yourself. Just strangers on the street. Like, there's, there's herds of people... Nobody I know, nobody I recognize, nobody that stops to talk, and nobody that fills you in or brings you up to date in what the current events are in a societal way. But then again, it feels like church is broken, school is broken, state is broken, the house, the marital bed is broken, the like repercussions from... The marital bed was forced into the wrong situation. And now there's some single parental guidance while the parental guidance is now being ostracized, cast away and forgotten about by the rest of society trying to struggle and figure this out. It really doesn't feel like a unified front. It really feels more like divided we fall rather than somebody succeeded on keeping us unified. That's really what it feels like by this decade or this chronological decade of 44 in years. Now, in the experiential category of my relevance, having spent time in whatever I was being after the Reagan error um, physical fitness test and having gotten the letter of whatever that was that I also at this point don't even know how to get a copy of or what that was about um, or what it said. And my parental units not even remembering that it existed. Um, I said, if I had gotten the letter and you had to give it to your lawyer, what lawyer would you have picked? 
And he's like, whatever lawyer I was using at the time. Maybe Maureen? Great, thanks for that. It's not even like a viable, like, if I'm doing my own investigation to go back into my own history, how do I trace that? It's so frustrating. Um, so, um, I remember Lloyd Harbor Elementary, um, the moms of the children of third grade. Um, we went to the Mint, wherever that was, nationally, national security, like whatever, the Mint of um, where money comes from, the printing of money, what it looks like, the president's pictures are on it. It's a special type of fabric. It's not paper. It's more of a linen, like vocabulary words and the importance and the significance of it. It's secrecy, it's secrecy, it's history steeped in whatever. Like it was really important to us when they taught it. Not that again, it's not one of those things though that I have readily accessible in the back of my mind. I never speak on it. Um, but the fact that there was tangible material evidence of our long reign in this territory for specific federal purposes and national security purposes, um, it's important. Just recently, uh, a local came to find me in Starbucks that I had never met before, or maybe I ran into as a teenager, who knows, in one random event. I mean, how does an archangel conduct herself? Um, and so I was sitting in Starbucks. I had, I think I had my green three quarter length wool coat on uh, olive green. And um, I was just doing my solitary whatever uh waiting for some sign from the from above and in walks new friend um who introduces himself one of the conversations that he had was something i had never heard about called crypto and i'm like what is that i was like again i said it's one of those trendy words that whizzes by no idea what it means and he was like, well, it's something, because again, in my studies at Green Street, crypto did not exist. So in early 2000s, crypto was not on the scene of educated, like private sector um, in financial markets in this area. But somehow, somewhere, crypto arrived at some point. To me, it was brought to my attention just recently um, somewhere between 2018, 2019, 20 or 21, 22. Um, it's a word that I've heard trending, but I don't, it has no real relevance to me because I don't follow it. I don't know what it's about, but what it is concerning to me, it's in, for me, direct violation with my national security needs of having a tangible material asset and like reminder that we exist here and what we look like um, as far as the reign of something um, and the fact that there are people able to operate outside of that in the private sector and the private sector is actually encouraging this breach of national security. That really scares me. But so they have on this star, um, they call it a star, I celebrity 
again, it gets really different between my star system and what the humans use this tangled word for. Um, I wouldn't, she's a famous person. That's as far up as I would go. But again, the media being whatever the media is, they place importance where it shouldn't be. Um, so she's up here. Uh, and her name's Kim Kardashian. Um, she apparently had some, like, TV series. I mean, like, things I don't follow. Um, and so, and I think she's part of the triplets. Like, her parents had triplets. I wouldn't be able to tell any of them apart. Um, and so, she did something, and now the SEC is going after or fining her for something, um, non-disclosure, um, because she, in her fame, that somebody granted her or blessed her with in this market, didn't disclose to the public how much she received or that there was, but I mean, for me under like frauds and things that are in direct violation of national security, I, I would think there's an even bigger set of circumstances and conversation yet to be had. I mean, the public's not having it, but I'm wondering where is that level of conversation ever brought up or where's that level of conversation ever had or held? Uh oh, the head is bobbing, the cards are ready. I don't know the song at all, but I'm doing the intro. You, got, you don't I know the song? What? Eddie LaBelle. What? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Okay. Yes, of course. Okay. I, have a, I have a picture framed on my wall. It's signed to me and everything. Okay. Uh, it's Fat Bear Week. If you don't know... Um, they say, they said the other night that they're not allowed to have a lobby. They're just migrant workers. They're not allowed to have a lobby and they're not allowed to change legislation. Then where does the international law come in when, in regards to, I mean, because everything's OCD. So domestic terrorist wise, being Homeland and New York is my Bayside station where my feet are and there's a big wide world in the great beyond. Although I don't even like to reference that at this moment because she's not what I considered part of the great beyond, although she's beyond that. Um, and so in orientation of how are they allowing alternate sources of income that go to fund outside international schemes and regimes and scary effects that then close circuit loop in some communication effort and are now influencing and changing demographics, laws, migration, immigration, and national standards in this micro to macrocosm type of system analysis from a chair where I'm like, where do I fit in all of this? And how do I even make a living for myself where I'll have money now in the near future and I'll be able to survive on that until I die, whenever that should be being that I'm halfway, I'm in midlife. I can't even get that basic need accomplished because of how bizarro land and playboy and capitalists are working the private sector. I've been shut out completely without any clue as to why. Oh, that is. We're going to explain we're gonna later. Yeah. You. We're going to tell you. But first, let's begin here with 
Kim Kardashian, who's agreeing to pay a big fine to settle a dispute with government regulators. Her legal team tells CBS News she cooperated fully with the SEC's investigation into her promotion of a cryptocurrency, and she remains ready to assist the agency in any way that she can. So under this settlement, the reality TV star will pay more than one and a quarter million dollars in fines after failing to properly disclose that she was paid to promote a cryptocurrency on Instagram last year. Kardashian also agreed not to promote any crypto assets for at least three years and will forfeit the quarter of a million dollar payment she received for the promotion. The chairman of the SEC posted yesterday saying, quote, a celebrity or influencer's incentives aren't necessarily aligned with yours, meaning the investing public. So here's two things to take away from this. Uh, she should have disclosed that she was actually getting paid right. from the organization that was asking her to post this to her 300 million plus followers on social media. Right. Um, the other thing is that's important to remember is when I worked on the street, you had to I had to have multiple licenses mm. to be able to sell or even recommend or even have a conversation with you wow. about securities. That's yeah. what the SEC wants, so that you know yeah. that I'm a professional right. and I'm a fiduciary and I'm providing you advice that is sanctioned under the SEC. A random influencer with a lot of people that listen to her, of course, who has no training in this, even if they're just saying, hey, this is an ad. Mm -hmm. Could mm -hmm. lead people astray. That's right. Especially and you have to disclose don't know what they're doing. getting paid. Yeah. When you see a celebrity on the Super Bowl ad talking about cryptocurrency, you know that they received a check yeah. for that promotion. And that their intentions might be backed by the money that right. they're getting paid. But how much does it really affect her big bottom line? Oh, she, she I don't think she can. I think she can. Okay. okay. She can write that check. She's She'll be all right. right. That's right. right. She's going to be all right. She'll be all right. She'll be all right. Uh, all right. I'm planning a trip next month. Talking about. So going from militarized service that it looks like they give housing stipends, like educational opportunities, they have some directory of service, some if you're having a problem, there's a process. I'm in an area where that level of service doesn't exist, or at least if it does, it hasn't been explained. And I don't know. I mean, like, again, I told the two um, Jesus Christ representatives from Latter-day Saint the other day on the street. I'm like, I have four boys. I feel like I see the the flags on the pole. I feel like somebody blessed me with that in Bayside Station that level of acknowledgement, but I don't know what it means. I really, I don't. I was like, and what's more frightening is I have four boys. How am I supposed to explain to my four boys and keep them intelligent so they can be men and they can be good husbands and they can be good fathers? How am I supposed to fix that for them when I don't even know the answers and I don't know where to go for the answers? And they were like, you know what? That's why I think that we should meet. He's like, because that's what we do is we help people who are having trouble or lost their way or whatever. And I was like, that would be great. And that's where I left it because there are so, it's a great big world out there. There's the great beyond. There's what's already transpired. And then there's a whole lot of life that happened with people that I would have liked to have kept in contact with. Very few of them, by the way. But they were one-time run-ins, and then they just disappeared off the face of the earth. And there's no way to contact them, because I don't know who they really were. It's star 1978, star 8378, Nicole Cataruza. It's Earth, Solar System, Milky Way, Universe, Galaxy is Broken. And it's Bayside Station, Bayside, New York, 11361. Today's October 4th, 2022.